Good evening and welcome to Gunner Shot. Today is a special edition. We are going to remember Paddy or Chief or Chief, the 20th Army Chief, from who was a chief from October 2000 to December 2002, and to remember him are four other veterans with me, who served with him, who been with him, who know him well. And more will join in as we go along. First, let me introduce everyone to you. Here they are, right? From clockwise after me is General Rashukla, with whom most of you are familiar. And then, of course, is General Madan Bandari, who was one of our DG artists. Following that is General Anil Ahuja, right? General Anil Ahuja again needs no introduction because he's come on to Ghana short quite often. And then. Finishing the quorum for the day is General K R Rao, who was also a DGRT uh, like General Bandari and uh, himself. Now, uh, as others will join in, but what I'd like to say before I, you know, invite anyone to speak is uh, today in the evening I went for the cremation of uh, General Band uh, Padmanabhan. I just returned from it. And then I was recollecting, what's this man all about? And the, and the things which came to my mind was all his, uh, you know, intellect, his sense of humor, his capability to handle very tough situations, his professional acumen, and most importantly, the three books which he wrote. And he was one of the, he's one of the few authors who's written about how to take on China and, uh, you know. U.S. and if you read his books, they're quite out of the box solutions, which could come handy one day down the line, right? And uh, so, we'll what we'll do today is I'll request each uh, of our illustrious veterans to speak about his early years, the time he spent in you know as GOC 15 Corps, and that is a time when you know uh, these the, he coined the term of containing militancy and insurgency and terror whatever you the way you want to describe it and he handled that hazrat bal episode the time was he was the army commander northern command goc in c northern command was a days pre kargil when india saw some of the toughest proxy war going coming from across and what base he set at that time served us in good stead as we went down the line, right? And then, of course, as the chief of army staff, he handled up Parakram, and he handled so well. And I'm sure, you know, those who are uh, going to tell about it, you're going to talk also about that famous, you know, uh, interview which he gave, or the press conference which he gave, when he told that, look, if Pakistan dares to use nuclear weapons, it might cease to exist as Pakistan. And that shook up the nation. And that shook up more than our nation, it shook up Pakistan. And it was only after that, that Pakistan really started toning down. Right? And mentioning much more. So I'll not come in the way. And the first person whom I'd request to take on and uh, lead the way is General K.R. Rao. Sir, please carry on. And your, uh, you know, the floor is yours. Yeah, it's indeed uh, my honor and privilege, uh, Shankar, to speak about uh, late General uh, Padmanabhan, BVSM, AVSM, and VSM. As you rightly said, better known as Baddy, to all those who had some association with him. I, I think actually he preferred to be known that way. Uh, incidentally, I shall not only be speaking about my association with him, but I, I will be taking help of certain excerpts from uh, a writer given by another uh, batchmate and Rimkolian friend of his, uh, uh, whose association has been over about 72 years. That is uh, ex-DGRT Jan Veneshenka. Briefly to recap, I think uh, to some of us who are not aware of, he was joined, I think, RMC sometime in Jan 52 and graduated to NDA in Jan 56. And General Veneshenka recapitulates that during those four years of RMC, he was recognized for his oratory skills, winning many debating and elocution 
contests. I mean, that's the first uh, memory of Jan Veneshankar, which goes back to the RMC days. Well, he was commissioned to the Regiment of Artillery in December 59, and as you have said, that uh, he took over as a chief in 2000 September and debuted office in December 2002, which is about 40 odd years, 42 years of outstanding service to the armed forces of the nation. And during his entire career, I think he had a reputation of being an outstanding gunner and a competent military professional. Well, as well as, uh, during his uh, service as GOC 15 Corps and also as uh, Northern Army Commander, I think Paddy distinguished himself in containing militancy and you already spoke about it, how forceful you would uh, enunciate what he felt about Pakistan or what he felt about our country. And I think to his credit goes the, uh, the first time, I think, creating of this security grid in, the, in his core zone, the 15 core zone. And later on, of course, that got uh, uh, chained into the Northern Theater also. And I think we also remember him for having launched this famous Operation Parakram at the base of the government. I think that is the only time, one of the few times when the entire Indian army has been fully mobilized to go on an offensive against Pakistan. And I wonder if it has happened any time after that except during war. General Vinay Shankar also was trying to remember, was trying to recapitulate, and he found something very interesting. We talked about that he was something which is not known to many of us is that once they found that the government was uh, dithering over the UCHS scheme, and when the army had given the proposal, then he went out to the giving a deadline by saying, Well, I approve the ECHS proposed by the army headquarters or else I will resign. I mean, this is what they're going to try to say. And that time, the uh, uh, Raksha <coughs> was uh, uh, so nice that he gave him a call and assured him that the ECHS scheme, which you are seeing today, uh, is in place. My interactions with Paddy began sometime in 1976-77 when I was in the brigade quarter in Rajouri. He joined Seven Field Regiment Ghazala initially as a BC for a very few days, later as 2IC. And of course, he took over the same regiment. I think uh, what I distinctly remember, you know, in various forums and also in the officers' mess, even at that point of time, there was certainly something very special about Paddy. Whether you call it an operational front, he would speak once in a while, but when he spoke, one, you knew that he is speaking a lot of sense. And uh, he was also known as an excellent human being. He would, uh, he was very much loved by the entire uh, lot of officers who were, had some association with him and also by the men alike. And thereafter, of course, I was fortunate that when he was Kalinjiyas of Gangtok Division, thereafter, Jewish of Seven Day, and of course, still he became chief and we saw him also as the senior colonel commandant. One thing he always uh, uh, distinctly remember is that uh, he carried himself with grace and poise. And he had a knack of making friends. In any forum, he would come down to the junior officers, whether it's mess parties or breaks during various professional discussions, and would quickly make friends. And uh, 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 as a senior colonel com commandant, I think Paddy was really a, a darling for all. So at this juncture, it's also important for me to uh, narrate one or two incidents which General Veneshankar also shared. He talked about oratory skills, lesser said the better, because he never used even a single extra word more than what was required for the brief. He is also attributed that Paddy had an outstanding grasp of our strategic and operational imperatives. What I saw him also, a very, very sharp man. He would grasp it at the drop of a hand. He would just listen to somebody for a, one sentence and he would make up. I think his intellect is well summed up in his book also, which you just talked about, post retirement The writing on the wall, India Checkmates, America 2017. And uh, uh, his, uh, actually speaking, one can really put it this way that one of the few, uh, uh, not few, so one of the persons... Uh, who had a great intellect, a scholarly general. His personal integrity and sense of propriety are quoted till today 
in all the regiments where he has served. I was fortunate to host him in uh, Delhi in March or April 2010. I also had a meal at his house uh, sometime before COVID, I think 2015-16. He enjoyed his drink, certainly. But interestingly, even while uh, uh, we enjoyed our uh, sit-together, I realized that he has enormous amount of knowledge on our scriptures. And he would go on and on to narrate as to how he was guided in his entire uh, career, all his years when he served the country. And a word about his sense of humor is very, very uh, interesting. He's, you know, more than humor wit. I think he, he was very uh, uh, sharp in that. I still remember we had an update during the Arti reunion in 2005. I and Padma got late and uh, Paddy had reached. I somehow managed to get past him as we were entering, just breeze past. Padma was trying to get past Paddy and uh, the door was a little narrow. And he realized uh, the Padma's predicament at that point of time. Look at the grace of man. By turning into humorous, he just turned back and said, Rupa, I think I'm following the wrong lady. Where are you? You see, <laughs> that, that's the presence of mind. You know, and that grace with which he uh, he didn't even uh, uh, you know make an issue out of it. So I think uh, uh, Paddy is, is is a great loss to many, uh, and uh, for all those of us who have the fortune of any association, I think he'll be missed for a long time, a permanent void, and certainly uh, you know having been a DG of artillery, uh, regiment of artillery, mourns for his loss. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks for your words about General Padmanabhan. You spoke about his wit, his sharp intellect, his approachability, his friendliness, and his capability. But then that was that's uh, uh, and you you also spoke about the interaction you had with him and all that. Now I request General uh, Madan Bandari, who was also. Our predecessor as a DG artillery, in fact, your predecessor also, to you know, speak about Jana Padmanabhan. Uh, sir, all yours. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be amongst all the illustrious gunners today. Now, mine is going to be more of a personal. Sort of a, uh, personal sort of things, rather than his contribution as a, as a corps commander, army commander, and as a chief. Uh, Paddy was uh, a year and a half senior to me. We first met in 1968 when we were doing, we did the LGS together. And at that time, uh, Ruby, uh, that is Rupa and Bini were the brides, as such, the first brides who sort of who, who met together. And the best thing about uh, him was that he was practically a genius. You know, while most of us toiled day and night to get through the LJSE, he would spend most of his time in THI drinking rum and his favorite drink. And uh, he nearly topped the course. Thereafter, we kept meeting. He went into general culture. And uh, thereafter, of course, the distinguished career, as Shankar has said, and K. R. Rao has also mentioned. Now, different ways. I, I did talk for General Carter and I went through the regimental appointment. So there was a sort of a void in my knowing him as a professional during his stint as 54th Commander, uh, Army Commander Northern and Southern Commands. However, we kept on interacting as such. And uh, we had uh, 
I was not part of his inner circle as such, but we had mutual respect and regards for each other. Now, one of his human qualities, which I still remember, was that during the uh, reunion in 2000 uh, at the Flagstaff House when he came, my granddaughter, a good old five-year-old, went up to him and saluted him. And uh, the grace, with the grace he saluted back, took her in his arms and carried her all through the reunion time we spent, the dinner we spent. He was a man with a golden heart. And James Bond, we say, a man with a golden gun. Paddy was a man with a golden heart. Uh, about his eloquence, about his sense of humor, about his uh, being able to express himself, I mean, that is universally you known. Uh, how would I want to remember him? I would want to remember him as a friend. I would want to remember him as a man of principle. I would want to remember him as a man who had pined to stand up, not only to the bureaucrats, but to the politicians and, every, and all the people who met him. I would like to remember him as a man who was loved by his officers, who was loved by his men. I would like to remember him that though we had certain amount of uh, mutual uh, professional differences, he always respected that. And, uh, and for that, I admire him. Uh, I was just also trying to remember <coughs> a couple of others this thing. Uh, how would I like to remember him? Yeah, a man with a strict exterior, but a very soft interior. As uh, Rao has also mentioned, his knowledge of everything, not only professional, but scriptures and everything else was immense. Uh, I would like to end by saying, rest in peace, my friend. We miss you. The regiment misses you. All your friends miss you. And we would want uh, your blessings when you are in heaven. At this point in time, I would also like to just say a few words about the contribution of Mrs. Padmana. As we all know, graceful lady, a lady who had a tremendous contribution towards not only the achievements of uh, General Padmanabhan, but also in softening all the rough edges which one develops over a period of time. She was indeed a driving force. And to this date, it is her grace, dignity, and friendliness which both Dini and I admire and respect. To her, her, her heartfelt, heartfelt condolences, and we are sure that the strong lady which she is, she will be able to bear this irreparable loss. Goodbye, my friend. Take care, and God bless. Thanks a lot, sir. Those were very poignant and moving words. Uh, what you said about Mrs. Padmanabhan, I completely endorse. I was there at the cremation and 
Uh, she was there strong, standing. She led the first street. And she was there till the time the flag, the national flag was handed back to her. Uh, brave lady. And I'm also, uh, you know, reminded by a few things which you said, which are, which I think everyone should take home. You know, you would like to remember him as a friend, as a man who could stand for a principle. Uh, these days, that's a rare quality in many, this thing, I mean, to stand up for principles. And of course, a man who could tolerate professional uh, differences. And I would add to say that he was a man who had professional honesty. And I'll talk about that towards the end. Uh, yeah, and uh, a point, of course, for everyone who's seeing, uh, I wouldn't like any of you to try to top a course like LGSE after drinking you know, rum and spending the best of your time at the bar. Because for that, you have to be a genius like General Padmanabhan. Unless you consider yourself in that category, don't attempt it. Right? If you are, all the best to you. Right? That's how I look at things. Now I'd like to uh, invite uh, General Anil Ahuja. Let me put it across to everyone. General Anil Ahuja uh, was serving alongside him when General Padmanabhan was uh, just a colonel, a lieutenant colonel, commanding a regiment, Seven Field Regiment. Right? He would have seen him in those days. Uh, General Ahuja, sir, I, uh, besides speaking of everything, I would like you to, you know, uh, focus a little on his early days. Because that's something, you know, people are known much later in life once they become generals and all that. But what was he in, in the younger days is something I would like you to throw a light on. General Ahuja, sir, all yours. Thank you, Shankar. After the remarks given by our senior veterans, let me first contextualize as to from what point did I see General Padmanabhan. He was nearly 18 years senior and elder to us in service. So when I saw him at every stage, whenever I saw him, I saw him as a young officer would see a, a revered senior, a second lieutenant and a lieutenant looking at a lieutenant colonel CO in those days, or a young major looking at a core commander. Now, when I, when I look at that, those are the impressions. And if I can remember that today, over four and a half decades later, probably there was some great impact that he left on me. My first association was when I was a second lieutenant and our regiments, I was in a medium regiment in uh, 25 artillery brigade in the area of uh, Rajori. And he was commanding the seven field regiment, another regiment in our brigade. And it just so happened that those were the days when the medium guns were very rare. We used to have 5.5 inch howitzers. And as a GPO, my battery was affiliated to his regiment. We were in the same brigade. So for those of us who are gunners would understand the language that we were the Sera battery of seven field regiment. And those who are non-gunners or not from uniform would perhaps realize that I was the fourth battery of that regiment attached. Now, uh, you as a second lieutenant, as a lieutenant, when you go out, you feel an outsider. You know, you are not too sure where, where you fit in into that. But it was a matter of days that... He made me feel integral part of the regiment or perhaps more than that. He took upon himself to train a young officer for the future. 
no whatever i learnt every time he uh, the rajouri punch sector is a huge sector and the medium regiments were deployed all over now he made it a point that he would tell me to probably hop on to the rear seat of a village jeep or a jonga whatever existed at that point in time and roamed around every road in the hinterland whether it was dkg or it was kg or it was the main roads going through surankot and all and it was a great learning opportunity for a second lieutenant now i remember those were good days i'm talking of 1978 79 early 80 that was the time i'm talking of there was no insurgency at that point in time but i still remember there used to be uh, children picked up from the school and uh, i had the opportunity where again he wanted me to learn as to how these things happen how these children are taken across the lc lc and trained to be terrorists there so there was a small village rajdhani on the road and uh, he took me there along with him where he was trying to find out as to what happened who were the teachers involved and all kinds of things which were to a second lieutenant which were a very very unique experience and in terms of his humor and his humane capabilities well his regiment being a 75 24 howitzer equipped mountain regiment was deployed up in mountains and a medium re- regiment was much more accessible from the road and he was a die hard south indian and my regiment happened to be a die hard khalsas and it was a treat for him to come and enjoy cups of tea and try and speak in his sprinkling of punjabi to the people and rather than people feeling reluctant about a senior officer visiting a gun position people always look forward to his visit now that is where he left an impression and what he taught me has stood me in good stead throughout because the way he taught me that terrain i can never learn it ever my second fast forward to 1993 95 our regiment was in shrinagar and he was the co commander and that was around mid 1993 94 and our regiment again happened to be part of the core artillery brigade otherwise it's rare for a major to have an opportunity to even see the core commander now let me in the short time available let me just cover uh, two small incidents i remember the gunners day of 1994 it was being celebrated in the bb cant gunners day function celebrated all arrangements made everybody enjoyed the party was over at a time when people were looking at winding down here was a core commander in an operational core who was there to be on parade as a core commander having finished the entire uh, event he called the qrt and he called his staff officers and some of us youngsters then were again told to hop into those vehicles for our education and throughout that night we went all over shrinagar and went around an entire circle coming along the dal lake from the hazrat bal side and at the crack of dawn we were back here was a person who was distributing his commitment to regiment to socializing and to his professional commitment as an operational co commander the second incident uh our regiment was carrying out uh convoy protection and rop duties on baramula shrinagar road and there was an altercation uh between 
our columns and some people in civil dress, in civil gypsies who were armed and who were trying to get into the convoys. And after the altercation and after a bit of manhandling between the two sides, uh, it emerged that they were some intelligence people who were roaming around in civvies. And one of the persons who was there, who was also pulled out, happened to be the SP of one of the intelligence organizations. Now, it became a big civil military issue. And it was perhaps the surest sign that that second lieutenant is going to get sacked, along with many, many more. Now, I don't know. I mean, I was too junior to understand how he handled the complexities of civil military relations because this was being handled at the level of the governor that time. But I was called one day to finish a court of inquiry in 24 hours. So I remember writing down the statements at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock at night and next morning along with the court of inquiry with the statements translated in a diagrammatic form showing where, who was, at what point in time, etc., etc., it was presented to him. Now, uh, despite the obvious implications that anyone would expect, he took appropriate action which was not at all detrimental to that young officer's career. He saved the situation. He managed excellent relations between the intel concerned intelligence agencies, police and the army. And after a couple of days, after he had most magnanimously sorted out that thing, he came to our mess. And obviously that youngster was extremely sheepish. He was moving around trying to, uh, you know, not come in eye contact with him. He got him, made him sit next to him on the sofa, put his arms around him and said, come on, you've got a long life to go. You've got a brilliant future. I know you are a daring guy. And that was the end of it. And that, that was the kind of leadership that we found in him. So as a junior officer, with 18 odd years of service differential, what one found was a professional, a humane professional, a person with an extremely good sense of humor and who could never, never ever who could be seen to be perturbed over anything and who could get you out of trouble anywhere, anytime. That's how I remember him from my two very short associations and I salute him in reverence and pray for him to rest in peace. Thank you. Oh, thanks a lot, sir. I think that was marvelous where you covered, you know, you've given a deep insight into what he was in his younger days. It's phenomenal that as a commanding officer, he had time to teach another unit, second lieutenant, about the grassroots of how terrorism, you know, operates in the valley, and that as a you know, way back as a CO, when most of us or rather none of most of us wouldn't have even dreamt of it. And then of course, what you painted out uh, when he was a co-commander and you were a major and things like that, the picture of a leader who stood up to his juniors, who had the capability to handle the roughs and toughs of civil military fusion and who could remain calm under pressure. And I think these qualities we've seen in him right through from his very formative stages till much later. And of course, the humor and wit which went along with it. Right, at this stage, uh, I have another veteran with me, Major General SVP Singh. Sir, welcome. Uh, please soak in the atmosphere and I'll call you to talk a little later. With this, I'd request uh, General Raj Shukla to wax eloquent about General Paddy because with a person like General Paddy, 
you can't do anything but wax eloquent. That's the way I've always felt about him. Over to you, Raj. I think the best way to begin this tribute about uh, Paddy, if I may say, take the liberty of saying so, Janu Padmanavan, is by quoting a piece that uh, Janu Zedu Shah wrote yesterday, where he said that something like this, that if when good and great men leave, there is no grief, there is only gratitude. So I think we should be grateful that uh, we had somebody like General Paddy in our lives as the chief. And he has left an imprint not only on us, but uh, I think on the wider nation, those who saw him in this period. Almost everything that I've seen from yesterday, from Shekhar Gupta to a host of others, everybody is profuse in praise of General Paddy. And getting such praise from your subordinates, peers and superiors alike, uh, is not easy at all. So, I mean, that, that I think, speaks uh, greatly of uh, Dhanu Pad. I have never served with him personally, because I think the age gap was, uh, the service gap was pretty huge and our trajectories never uh, crossed. But I'll tell you one very significant thing. When I was in IMA, he was the battalion commander. And I very nearly joined infantry, but and we, in at the time we used to, uh, I was graduating, we were told that wait for General Padmanabhan's speech before you make your choice of arms. Uh, and we had other battalion commanders, for Balsara, that, but it was when General Padmanabhan spoke and the choice of arms followed, I opted for artillery. In the year that I was there, there were three of us in the super block who opted for artillery. Pan Pani Grahi, Naveen Sabarwal, just because of General Padmanabh. That was the power of his persona. Um, and when I was the army commander, I really tried to get good artillery guys as battalion commanders because it makes so much of a difference. Uh, so, I mean, this is the first thing that comes to my mind. Then, uh, after that, one heard about his brilliance here and there. I'm not sure people senior to me would know, but I'm told that the other great chiefs uh, in terms of intellect, uh, and I think they were pretty similar. It was General Sundarji who spotted him when he was commanding Absolutely. the Arctic Brigade. Some I, people seem to maybe correct me. And he got into the General Carter, and then we started hearing about him as GOC 7 Div, 15 Corps, as the uh, Northern Army commander, so on and so forth. But his obvious brilliance, and I would rate him in the same category as General Sundarji. General Sundarji was inclined towards technology and all, and General Padmanaman had very great qualities of intellect and generalship. And it came to the fore during that press conference in Paran. I mean, here was a man who understood geopolitics, <coughs> understood uh, the conventional and nuclear domains, their interface. Uh, and I watched that press conference many times over. I was trying to search for it yesterday. I couldn't find it on YouTube. It was, a, it was a classic, uh, uh, and not only the press conference, but it demonstrated what generalship is all about without a piece of paper. Uh, his handling of those questions, I mean, as somebody said, his grasp of uh, the operational, the strategic, and uh, the wider stuff. And you know that statement that he made on nuclear, the nuclear dimension, it brought Musharraf to his nuclear sense. Otherwise, that guy was just saber rattling all around. And uh, it was not very well received by the civilian community because they don't understand nuclear war fighting. But those who understand it, understood it, the message was very severe. And I think that it was not that he was being uh, irresponsible about the, our nuclear capacity and all. He gave some very solid messages, you know, in that whole debate about massive retaliation and so on and so forth. Yeah, here was somebody who really understood this uh, whole uh, uh, business. Insofar as other qualities are concerned, I mean, I've seen him from a distance. He embodied what I think in the army is known as Sharafat. Uh, no, he had that boyish charm, but he also had, uh, he was somebody who could be trusted as the many anecdotes have showed. He was honorable. He was dignified. I think he was one of those generals who told us that the army is run not by army act, by the army act but by so many other qualities. There's a lovely saying which says that in a hierarchical organization like the army, there will be a senior and a junior. The senior, if he's a gentleman, will never show it. 
the junior if he, the gentleman will never forget it. People like General Padmanabhan inspired that kind of respect, respect and love and so on and so forth. The next time I come in contact with him was when General Rajan was my boss. His MA, General Shiv Kumar, was my GOC. General Rajan was the CRT when I'm in Hyderabad. And he wrote that book. And when he wrote that book, I just sent two computer operators uh, and his grace while returning those chaps, giving them gifts, speaking to me. And then he told me that, read my book and write a review. So that became a huge task. I think the same one, this China, US one. But when I wrote that review, he I have got that thing handwritten with me. He wrote back, uh, you know, praising <laughs> it, and then seeing how I could have written it better and so on and uh, so forth. I mean, so these are these personal qualities. I remember when I was MO Directorate. So every month you sort out, a, the, not sort out, you inspect some documents in the Almera of the DGMO. So I recall... Uh, this is after Parakram, or I think during Parakram. I recall an exchange between <laughs> an army commander and him. And the army commander was complaining about a host of issues. And I categorically remember General Padmanaman's remark on it. He said, why did he have to write the letter? Couldn't he have picked up the phone and spoken to me? So look at the expectations <laughs> of the man. Even in, you know, things of operational differences and all, this business ki chitti lik dena. This was not in him. He was a, a, a different kind kind of uh, man, uh, man. His uh, this two thoughts of rum business, I don't know what is there. It's something in the army genes. But those people who have these two thoughts of rum are always brighter than the others who don't have the other <laughs> thoughts. Right. And uh, now, just two serious points, you know, I would like to end with. He was somebody, I don't know what, I can't describe the reasons. Uh, generalship you know, came to him as a very fine art. It came naturally to him. It was not a hat that he somehow, you know, donned ungainly <laughs> like any generals like me do. He was a real general. And I think, uh, you know, if uh, brass tacks or, sorry, uh, Parakram had actually turned into a conflict, uh, it may have brought out the best of Paris. Um, because his strategic genius and all would have got tested. And I think personally, he was disappointed uh, by the fact that uh, we finally, many times when the occasion so demand, we didn't press the accelerator and uh, you know take on the Pakistan. I will end just by saying this, you know, there's, uh, there's a British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, and her subordinate was John Major. And John Major was trying to tell her why, you know, he deserved to succeed her. And he actually did. And Margaret Thatcher turns around and tells Major, he says, John, you have a you know wonderful head, but your head, unfortunately, is not connected to your spine. Paddy mm -hmm. bucked that trend. He not only had a splendid head, but as all of us have said, his head was very firmly connected <clears throat> to his spine. And I think that's the best thing we can say about General Paddy. A great man, a good man, somebody who's lived his life well, and somebody who the entire rank and file, those who served with him and generations thereafter, can look up to him to emulate. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, General Raj Shukla, uh, for reminding the necessity of a head and a spine and both being strong. Not strong headed, you know, firm headed, and with a strong spine. That, I think that's a major quality which many leaders need to have. And if you add two tots of rum, you're sure to, sure to be a general, as General Paddy has proven me. Okay, now I'll again recount because you know I remember watching that uh, you know famous press conference which he gave. Two lines stood out. It, it has never gone out of my head. Is again I repeat it. He said, "Look, if Pakistan dares to use the nuclear option, Pakistan might cease to exist." It carried a hell of a lot of meaning. And another, you know, line he used, he said, look, this whole story is like two bulls in a ring. No one dare get get in between the bulls. And I know which bull is the stronger one. Yeah, please. I just said say once, I tell you, it was not his saber rattling. It was his response to Musharraf's saber rattling. Yeah. It is like yeah, you I today. Agree. 
who does this nuclear saber rattling and nobody counters it. So General Padmanabhan sees the government <laughs> and called his bluff. And there, because yeah. he understood the whole game very well. I think that was the... Right. It is not saber rattling by any stretch of imagination. It's just that on that day, I think he just showed the saber to Pakistan and said, this is for you if you don't behave. And I think after that, things changed. I'll leave it at that. Right? And another point which you made about the water wars and things like that. If you read his book about the water wars between India and China and all that, to a large extent it is playing out. Because today I read an right. article in the South China Morning Post where they said the water in Tibet is going down. By in days to come, water will, you know, water in Tibet will not be there. And if that happens, if you see, we know the geography of this area well, it's the Yangtze Basin and the Huanghu which will get affected. And if that happens, you're looking at what <laughs> General Padmanabhan has outlined in his book. To some extent, I would, I, I'll dare to say that, look, this is a man who saw tomorrow. Right? And many of us, I think, it's a visionary who could see over the horizon. And I think many of us need to reread that book and also read the one where India checkmates USA. Right. At this point of time, I'm also joined by, by General PR Kumar. Welcome. But uh, hold your horses, soak in the uh, atmosphere before you make up what you have to talk of. <coughs> and Ranbir, I'm going to make you wait because you are his YO. So you're going to be at the end, tail end of all talk. And, you know, right. So, General SVP Singh. Sir, you are my ADG and I would like you to give your views on General Padmanabhan and you are so insistent that you must speak, I could not refuse you. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, General Shankar. Uh, it's an honor for me to join in this uh, very creamy layer of uh, illustrious gunners, all very senior to me. <clears throat> but I recall here I will put a joke uh, across in the mold of uh, General Paddy himself, <clears throat> you know. So I was there somewhere uh, in an event where I delivered a talk in Hotel Lalit uh, about uh, four years back. So a lady at lunchtime, you know, she saw my name uh, there and she said, uh, you are a major and a general both. So I did not know what to answer, but I think it was in the General Paddy's mode. I responded. I said, yes, ma'am, you got to major to become a general. So today, among the lieutenant generals, I can feel I'm the major. <coughs> now that my first <coughs> real contact with General Padmanaman came on a Rimkolian grid. And so I'm one among uh, the crowd here, uh, among the guys who's a Rimkolian. And uh, he being a great son of the RAMC, oh, I happened in Dehradun, when you know, Raj Shukla was a gentleman cadet, I went across to him to meet him. And before that, you know, I'd met a battalion commander who was from the signals and he, he had been our family friend. So he told me it's a very busy time in IMA, there's no time and like that. And after that, I went to pay my respects to General Palman Amin. So when I said, please may I come in, sir, he said, yes, please come. So when I entered the office, I found just the table lamp light was on and I could not really spot the battalion commander at that, that time, Colonel Padmana. So then I found that he was sunk in his chair and he had a sports and pastime uh, covering his face. I sat down and he said, okay, let's have a cup of coffee. It's always nice to, great to have a room calling around me. And... Then I found that there was a pile, you know, from the floor. It was coming up of sports and pastime and illustrated weekly. And then the first thing he told me was, oh, it's a great place, you know. There is no work here. But the pre preceding battalion commander whom I'd met, he said, there's a very heavy load of work. So that was his style. <clears throat> and uh, it was a, a great meeting him that day. I think he never let me go uh, before about 20, 30 minutes I spent with him. And, that was really my first time I met him. Now, second, which I really want to say, uh, which was my great honor, was when I was the artillery center commandant 
in 2002. And uh, we had to bid farewell to General Pramanaman. It was combined with the artillery conference. And it was a very enlarged artillery conference. A uh, lot of general officers, I think over 30 were attending, or maybe more. And uh, the DG Artillery General Nagra, he asked of me to see to it that everyone is present for that lunch out for uh, him, which we had to do in the artillery mess. So we organized it in a manner. And I must tell you, we had 144 strength attending. How? I removed those dining tables. And we had the narrow dining tables, which are for marriage parties. And we could adjust everyone. So I was sitting with them the, on the table. And when I had to speak, I, before that, I told him, I said, I'm very nervous what to say. So he told me, Rangolians are never nervous. So I got up. And this is what how I started. And I do not know what drove me to say. I said, General Padmanam, sir, senior colonel commandant, chief of army staff, colonel's commandant, ladies and gentlemen, it's today a short guy like me feels very tall to bid farewell to General Padmanam, perhaps the tallest army chief we have had. <clears throat> and next I qualified, sir, I remember vividly the headlines which came out in your first press conference in the Pioneer newspaper. And that read, and this is what I stated, I am no Napoleon, says Paddy. So I further qualified that. Very true, sir. Napoleon did not have the good luck of commanding the northern and southern armies and this great Indian army. And the stop table it just thumped with General Shota, General Shantanu Chaudhary, and the cream of the gunners, Colonel Commandant, General Pami Sagal, they were all present. So <clears throat> after that, when he got up to speak, he said, Let me, uh, let's give a clap to this uh, brigadier, a short Sardar. That's what he mentioned. And uh, <clears throat> he told me he's nervous what to speak. So that is it. And he carried this uh, memory very, very deeply with him when I next met him in, in the artillery center in 2008. So that was my interaction with him and, uh, at a level when I was uh, the center commandant. Before that, I was commander of the 12 artillery brigade in Nasirabad. And General Bandhari is here. He was our DG artillery at that time. <clears throat> there was a very large, the biggest firepower demonstration which was held. Uh, in the Indian Army, because apart from what the artillery was doing, uh, we had the introduction of infantry four Bravo weapon systems uh, demonstration also to be done. And the Raksha Mansi was Major Jaswan Singh. So it was a very, very uh, prestigious uh, event which the chief had conveyed to the army commander and all that he wanted to see that the four, four Bravo weapon system has to get through all those introductions. And that day, General Padman Aman, his grace, his poise, I first observed the how his dynamic presence, what we say in leadership, projection of personality was all very domineering without him speaking. And uh, that is one thing that I really picked up in him, a great personality, his, uh, his very presence spoke about that. Now, next is, you know, I was sick. I was also Jeevan Ops in 1990 in 11 Corps. And that time, Brigadier Padmanaman was a commander with 23 infantry division who were operating in Punjab in 11 Corps. So I had an opportunity of interacted, interacting with him and subsequently he picked up his rank as GOC 7 infantry division. So I remember a sand model exercise which was conducted. The core commander was that time General B.K. and Shibba. And what a successful conduct of that sand model. It was an education. And when he summed it up, the core commander himself mentioned, that's one of the best summing ups I've heard in the exercise. So that was General, uh, General Aman. And <clears throat> now I will want to, uh, I heard him say in a gathering. So when he was we could chief. give a, a little to others.
you don't mind yeah i just let me just say this last yeah. part uh, he's mentioned that he got a call from the raksha mantri uh, you know in in a flash he said listen chief i have to go to the prime minister and i have to tell him okay, what is the biggest need of the army today and jal padmanan said i thought for a fraction of a second and i said married accommodation and that's how the map took place and the prime minister announced in the 2001 august independence day uh, thank you very much for giving me this time um well i would say that he was the leader in the rare earth mold thank you thank you very much thanks a lot sir you spoken of a leader in the rare earth mold and you also mentioned when others had work he did not have any and despite that he was more successful than others and you described him as the tallest army chief we've had i think that was very great based on your own uh, interaction now i request general pr kumar sir you're welcome please uh, the stage is all yours over to you we can't hear you you are you muted you're muted please unmute uh, good evening colleagues especially the seniors general rao and others my apologies first for joining a little late we had a little crisis in the society i was just uh, busy with that i missed out on all the gems which uh, uh, the other speakers would have spoken my association has been only once in my entire career uh, for a an hour or so or maybe 2 hours when i uh, met general paddy uh, i was colonel gs 19 div uh, those days uh, the lc was quite hot not that he had come because of that but it was on his visit and as a chief in i think 2000 and late 2000 or 2001 he came to our division uh, i remember those days the colonel gs used to give the presentation even if it was the chief and thereafter only the goc myself the chief and the ma was uh, now <coughs> lieutenant general sir kumar we had lunch in the library of 19 dev raj may be familiar but i don't know whether the library has changed but it was a very beautiful room with a wonderful view of the valley and it was very pretty and the library was had a lot of books so i remember i as a colonel gs did not really uh, speak much i was basically they were in a jolly mood he had his drinks he was basically chatting with uh, shiva kumar and cracking jokes and i remember ki what a befitting uh, lunch we are having in uh, baramulla surrounded by thoughts and words so it was uh, spontaneous uh, the way he said it it wouldn't have occurred to me that when you go to a library when he when you say that you are surrounded by thoughts and words it's uh, that when uh, Shankar told me that we are just getting together in the evening. This is the one thought which occurred to me. The rest, of course, uh, <clears throat> one has always thought that he was an exceptional officer and a gentleman, an exceptional leader, who uh, led by his a very self-effacing and a very uh, a, a person who did not feel the necessity to dominate anybody. He was not a dictator. he was a person by his sheer intellect his sheer personality and charm i think he won over the entire indian army and uh, he was a legend and he was an iconic gunner and uh, i salute him and remember him on his uh, on his uh, demise today thank you uh thanks a lot sir i think you made a very very interesting point uh i that I, I thank you for it you spoke of his spontaneity and his you know uh, words like he surrounded by thoughts and words and that surrounding of thoughts and words in a militancy high pressure militancy environment just tells you the thought process of this man and how he could behave in the toughest of conditions and how we were fortunate to have a leader who could think of many thing else many things other than the militancy in a completely high pressure militant environment hats off
before I uh, now invite General uh, Ranbir Salaria to talk about him, uh, I would request all those who are watching, if you have a message about General Padmanabhan, like the way General Shamiraj has written, and I would like you to write it out. And at the end of this, I'll read all those good messages out. I'll not take any questions today. I'd rather you people, those 52 of you who are 60 or whoever is seeing it live, put down your thoughts and we'll read it out. Yeah. With this, I'd like to invite uh, General Ranbir Salaria. Ranbir commanded the same regiment as uh, General Padmanabhan. Uh, he, uh, and uh, who would know uh, General Padmanabhan better than Ranbir? And so, over to you, Ranbir, because today I s did see your CEO here and your men who were there laying wreaths at, uh, at this cremation. And I'm sure you had a lot of interaction with him. I know it for sure you had a lot of interaction with him. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me a chance to speak out my sentiments today. There are so many memories and uh, it's difficult to summarize, but I will try my best. I first saw Jan Padmanabhan like uh, Raj Shukla when I was a cadet in IMA. After March 1980, he had joined. After commanding the unit, he had come straight to IMA. And I used to, uh, being the battalion under officer, I used to interact with him. He was our battalion commander of Thamaya Battalion, and I used to interact with him on a daily basis. And I can just place it on the court without any hesitation that it was his charisma, his aura, which I saw as a young cadet, that <clears throat> it made me, within a span of three months or so, it made me change my choice of arms. I am from an infantry background, fifth generation officer, and my complete family, my father, grandfather were from the infantry and great grandfather and all were from the cavalry. And I changed it to artillery just because I was so much impressed with the personality, the dynamic personality and the dashing personality of General Padmanabhan. And I put the choice as seven field regiment, seven field regiment, seven field regiment, knowing that being a company, you can see I'll get it. And in those days, my Chacha Ji was there. My father was not there. He gave me a telephone call and he, he expressed his uh, displeasure that I have joined artillery. And I told him, Chacha Ji, if you meet Colonel Padmanabhan, who's my battalion commander, then you will realize as to why I have opted for artillery. And I remain ever so grateful to General Padmanabhan for guiding me onto this great arm of ours. So that is how I saw him. There's just one very, very interesting uh, incident uh, as in IMA after in, uh, that is during uh, Camp Torna. And that is when I saw one, uh, one aspect of his personality, which uh, we kept seeing in, in, uh, in the different stages of his career. And that aspect of his personality was that he was able to assess a situation from his experience and with his third eye. And he was dead on accurate always. I was happened to be the platoon commander and we were on top of a hill and we were supposed to dig our defenses. And the battalion commander was to come for inspection in the afternoon. I was a platoon commander and as I all know, nobody bothers and everybody was sleeping and I was literally trying to wake up everybody, Jago, let's dig up, battalion commander is coming to inspect us. But uh, things were very sh shoddy. And we were generally not prepared. And then I saw, to my horror, the battalion commander walking up the hill. I ran down halfway, saluted him, and from my face only, and the way I was talking, he made out what I was trying to convey. And without even questioning anything, he just looked around and said, okay, let's do one thing. This hill is very high. Let's go to a, an easier location and we'll see some other locality over there. And he went over there. In the Badakhana, which was to the campfire, which was to follow, uh, he came to me and he called me and he said, son, were you ready for today's inspection? I said, no, sir. And then he just kept quiet. He just looked at me. And in that look, he conveyed everything. He conveyed everything that this is not what I expected from, from you. And you better wake up and you better sort yourself out. And that was the biggest lesson I learned in my life 
and I never made that mistake again in my in my whole career. So that was a type of uh, uh, personality we saw as young cadets and got totally impressed uh, with it. In the unit, uh, if General Shankar remembers when he was a DGRT and when we used to interact with a lot of uh, units, uh, when he was a gun commandant, he used to interact with a lot of CEOs and he used to tell them, that you have the photos in your CEO's office, they will be able to salam you today. But the real test comes when after seven years, people still remember you and, and give you the salam. And that is exactly in that, uh, General Padman was in that same category, where even today, when you go to the unit, all Jawans remember him with such love and affection and with such of, so much of respect. And his story, his legacy, uh, he commanded so many uh, decades back. They are still so much uh, alive in the uh, in the in the unit. So that is the type of commanding officer he was. I am told, though I never saw him as a commanding officer, but I kept uh, I, I keep interacting with all the senior officers who were there with him as uh, as youngsters. And what even General Uja said, he had institutionalized the training of youngsters through various uh, uh, exercises, uh, tactical exercises, especially. He also had instituted the, uh, the procedure of uh, uh, making a, a detailed career chart of, of each officer as to in which year of service he is supposed to do what. And then that is to be followed very religious, uh, religiously. And we all owe our progression in our careers just because of that uh, very meticulous planning by, by our commanding officers. He was also known for his deep connect with the troops. And wherever you read, uh, it, it comes that one of his biggest quality was the welfare of troops and families. And that is the impression still which is there in 7th Field Regiment. He had set so many uh, practices which are still being followed in the unit, especially for the welfare of troops and establishing a direct connect uh, with the with the troops. He knew every inch on ground. The sector which, uh, uh, which General Hucha was trying to tell us, uh, he knew each and every inch of the, the Rajori sector and I'm told that even the commander and GOC used to go by him. If I, in any uh, in brainstorming session or any uh, operational discussion, ultimately they used to uh, uh, ask Colonel Padmanavan to uh, to give his views of the of the terrain analysis or whatever uh, they were dis discussing. So that is the amount of uh, deep knowledge that he had, and he continued with that uh, deep knowledge even as the core commander and the army commander of uh, uh, Northern Command. No, uh, I just wanted to also uh, uh, highlight, we all know as to what uh, he did in his senior ranks, but just uh, the way he handled uh, as GOC 15 Corps, uh, there was a very interesting quote, uh, which he made, uh, I think, as a Northern Army commander, when he said that, you call this a low intensity conflict, but for a soldier who stops a bullet, all intensities are, are, are the same. That is the there's a lot of uh, meaning in this uh, thing that he said uh, as far as the 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 conflict which is going on in the valley uh, at, uh, at that point of time. He's known for his four trade comments and the way he handled the Hazelpal crisis of 1993, which was a very volatile and a very complex situation. Uh, I mean, a lot of things and a lot of lessons are to be learned uh, from that. And a lot, and very many people uh, talk of the uh, the intrusions that had occurred in the Baltic sector of 1996 and as the army commander in 1997 he had ordered a patrol base to be established near the village of Jaldor to uh, have a check over there but it is a different thing that uh, uh, when the actual Kargil uh, intrusions took place that uh, base uh, was not there for, for various reasons and in operation parakram he like what uh, raj said that he had he could he showed that he could handle all the high stakes uh, situations with ease and also make uh, forthright statements, which even uh, we all know that on 11th of uh, January, he had made this statement. Uh, I have got a statement with me uh, in the exact words. He said that if anybody were to target our troops or formations, the perpetrators of that particular outrage shall be punished so severely that their continuation thereafter in any form will be doubtful. And if you recall, in the next day, uh, the President, uh, President uh, uh, Musharraf, he made conciliatory statements uh, towards uh, support of terrorism through the soil of Pakistan. So uh, I, uh, you can just keep going and, and talking about him. And in Oprakram, 
uh, he had expressed his displeasure that either we go to war when the thing prolonged for such a long time. He said, either we go to the war or we, uh, let us go home. And uh, uh, he made it very clear to the uh, to the uh, to the top leadership of the country at that time. Uh, I uh, uh, also want to make a mention that it is just coincidence that uh, uh, I started my uh, career with him, and just a few days back, I was writing an article on the uh, role of uh, armed forces, the stellar role of armed forces in promoting sports in India, and uh, I just finished it uh, one day before he passed away. And I was about to send the draft to the to the uh, to the editor, and in that article, I had lauded General Padmanabh's role in initiating, in envisioning, and uh, initiating and implementing it on ground. That is the Mission Olympics, which he had envisioned 20 years, more than 20 years back. So I dedicated that article to uh, General Padmanabh for uh, for uh, not only uh, uh, reviving these sports in the armed forces, but also uh, helping the nation to reach where it has reached today, though we all know that a lot of work is still yet to be done. But he had set the nation on the right path as far as these, these sports are concerned. And same thing happened. Uh, he also uh, did a lot for the establishment of the ECHS uh, concept, which got uh, approved by the, by the government in December 2002, uh, just before he had uh, super um, annuated. His role in the natural disasters, he found a lot of uh, lacunas over there in the Gujarat earthquake when 22,000 uh, army troops were deployed. And of course, in the Gujarat rights, he had uh, ordered General Zedu Shah, who was a GOC at that time, he take a formation tonight itself and sort this out. And uh, General Shah sorted it out in the next 48 hours. So that is uh, the, the contributions that he had made for the nation. It is a treat to uh, read his, his books, his three books. And uh, I think uh, uh, it was a very uh, unique combination wherein he, uh, he uh, combined the national security issues with fictional uh, writing. I think it's a very, very uh, novel concept of uh, writing, though he set everything in a, uh, in a very optimistic and in a very wishful scenario. Because and through that, he, he pointed out the inadequacies of our system. When he said, uh, says in this uh, book of uh, uh, writing on the wall that uh, there's a uh, national unity government uh, in the country, which is established, and because of of the national of its solid government and of its political will, it is able to steer India towards a path of self-reliance. The same things that we are talking today of uh, 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 removing all the organizational the equipment voids, building up its uh, its uh, uh, missile defense, building up its air force, building up its uh, nuclear uh, nuclear capabilities, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then be able to take on the might of USA. Uh, along with uh, Pakistan, very painful scenario of a war with Pakistan, and so all these issues uh, are alive today. And he could envision it. Well, this book was published way back in uh, 2004, and he, he he envisioned what is happening uh, 20 years uh, since then. And the same thing happens uh, in his book of the uh, his next uh, uh, China India war, where he uh, envisions the independence of Tibet, which is now being uh, talked of in various forums including in, in, uh, in Jan Sh uh, Shankar's um, uh, gunner shot as to how uh, Tibet should get independent and why it should, it should, uh, it should get independent. He talked about this in, in his book. Uh, so uh, hats off to him. And in, the, in his first book, the, the journal speaks, he has, uh, he has, in cap in, he has uh, summarized the, all the issues which are affecting our army. Uh, and he has envisioned the future as to how the future wars will be fought and what will we have, and how much prepared are we as an army of the of this uh, millennium? So that is a, a kind of person he was. And uh, lastly, I would like to say that I also uh, saw him uh, after he had hung up his uh, uniform, and I, I kept met, met, meeting him in Chennai. And he had, uh, uh, firstly, we all know that he shunned the the public eye, uh, and that shows the level of his uh, of his integrity because he. He, I asked him once, sir, why aren't you uh, 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 doing something? He said, no, uh, because uh, whatever I'll be expected to do, uh, we will most likely go against my principles. So I won't do it. The so-called the, the signing cures, he, he refused it. And uh, he went on a path, a path of spirituality and, and religion. And he found peace in that. And uh, uh, so uh, connecting with him even after uh, in the last uh, 10, 15 years, was an experience and a learning by itself as to how one should lead his retired uh, So that is all I have to say, that he was an exemplary leader 
with this both tactical and strategic brilliance, a man of uh, integrity, man of principles, simplicity, uh, and what General Madan said, uh, exterior, a very rough and very tough man, but interior, he was full of compassion and so soft and uh, totally dedicated to the welfare of troops. So uh, I we can only uh, pay our gratitude to such a great man and uh, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, thank you, sir. So can I just say oh, thanks a lot? Uh, yeah, please, please. I, thought, I was just recalling his uh, MA General Rajan, who was my boss, used to say how quick on the uptake and decisive he was. So he said when he was the chief, people would come with these files with twenty flags, and they would tell him, uh, tell the MA, "Ye do minute me hoga. I need twenty minutes." And he says, "The half of all of them would be out of the office in one minute." Because before you sat down, <laughs> Daddy gave you a decision this way or that way. And the only people he tolerated for more than two minutes was either his rump partners or Rimpolians. <laughs> yeah, so almost that, 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 that I forgot. It's a very interesting incident because he used to hit the he used to hit the nail on the head. Like I said, he, used, he could assess the thing. Uh, yes, we were moving from a, in, a, in a military special train after our Siachen tenure, and uh, we were moving to Coimbatore. And we had a halt in uh, Delhi, and we called on him uh, at the at the army house. And uh, if you recall, some military special train, the the, the most uh, loved place is, is that bomb, the open bomb, where in the evening the uh, we all uh, uh, you put your chairs and the uh, all the officers and the, if there are any families traveling, you have and sit down over there and have a nice time. And when I met uh, uh, the chief in, in the army house, the first thing he said to me, I hope you're not having that bomb system in your train. So <laughs> <laughs> you will you are hereby I hereby prohibit you and it will not be done in your balance of your travel from here to Pampu. So he had a knack of hitting that nail on the head and he knew where to you know find. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Thanks Shankar, a lot. I just in one minute, uh, General Shankar, could I just share sir, something we'll, of the we'll RNC and General Anaman? In we'll, a minute. We'll, 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 I'll get back to you. I'll 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 get back to you, sir. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. Uh, well, uh, I'd like to summarize what uh, General uh, Salaria said. He spoke a lot with a uh, lot of great passion. The most important thing which he spoke and it gels with others is his love for troops. And I see it in seven field. I've seen it in seven field at close quarters as to how each man and family uh, looked upon General and Mrs. Padmanabhan. Even that I could see it even as late as today. But was it just his love for his unit? I don't think so. I think he had a genuine large heart for the entire army, the people of the army and their families. And that is exemplified with what has come out in this discussion that he was his only wish list for the chief, uh, the prime minister and the Russia Mantri was okay in the map and then his insistence on the ECHS. So he carried this straight forward throughout as a leader who thought more of his troops than himself. And I did say that I'll get back to this quality of professional honesty back. And I'd like to put it across. You know, in the artillery, we all know, uh, at some point of time, the 155 mm 52 caliber gun was to be the standard gun, which was to be inducted into the army. Uh, this whole story started just after the Kargil war. Somewhere in one of the conferences, I'm sure General Madan Bandari would probably know about it better than I do, but it was there where he put the tick mark that we should go in for the 155 mm 52 caliber gun. And we tried, we tried for a decade, nothing happened. And you know, General Bandari tried his best, I know for sure. General uh, Rao tried his best. And uh, he, he I mean, I'm sorry, he's, yeah, General Rao tried his best to get, nothing happened. I still remember, uh, and we were making some headway with the 155 mm, 45 caliber, and 39 caliber. I still remember during a reunion, I was a brigadier those days, when he stood up, you know, in an open forum of all gunners and it said 
Look, I think I made a mistake by insisting on the 155 mm 152 caliber. We should look at other options. We should look at the 45 caliber and also probably the 39 caliber. And that stuck me as a man who 10 years after relinquishing his role, rank, everything could come and say, look, I made a mistake then. I think it's time to correct. And we took it on from there. Right. And we revisited our whole situation. And personally, I've used this phrase of his or his admission or his, whatever you call it uh, to argue the case for the regiment of artillery uh, in all forums. And lo and behold, what do we have? We have a family of 155 guns which are streamed in now. And that is something which I think uh, tells uh, the great professional honesty which he displayed and much after retirement. And I think we'll, I'll, at least I'll take this back, uh, you know, to my grave. Right. What we'll do now is, uh, General SVP Singh, sir, you wanted that one minute. Please go ahead. Then I'll request General K.R. Rao to encapsulate what all we spoke. And finally, the senior most amongst all of us, General Bandari, will have the last say. So, General SVP Singh, sir, uh, your one minute starts now. Thank you, General Shankar. It is the RAMC who gave the chief to the Indian Army. But how it happened, it's, it's on record what I'm going to tell now. When he was going for the Services Selection Board for the NDA, he was not sure whether he wants to join the Army. And he asked the masters how I can fail in the SSB. And this was brought to the notice of the principal. And the principal wrote to his father. He said, this, this cadet has a bright future. And I think some word like genius or something has been used in the principal in his dozier. And uh, then he called him and said, listen, you've got a very bright future. And if you feel you're not uh, up to it in India, you will go into foreign service. These are recorded things I'm saying. I remembered ultimately he was motivated and what he did for the army, what he did for the armed forces, is going to be remembered in the annals of military history of Indian Army. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Then, also, your, your, a couple of minutes to sum up what all we've done the whole evening today. I, I, I don't think we have enough of time actually to speak. We can go on and on and speak about uh, Paddy. <clears throat> I think, uh, firstly, we, he was one of the first officer gentlemen to the core. He was certainly one of the scholarly as even Raj and uh, Anila also talked about it. A man of that caliber, that intellect, that uh, uh, knowledge on strategic affairs and the ability to put across in a very lucid manner and you know, to the point, he never waffled around. He, 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 he had a, such a fine command over the language and to top it all, I think, you know, very few of us are blessed. Hardly any we can really come across that. Who's got the grace and poise also to carry himself. For that matter, like even uh, uh, my friend Ranbir was saying, the minute he was walking itself, his walk itself, people used to look at him. We were enormous. I mean, we used to look at him. The way he used to, uh, people used to wonder as to how he used to have such a clean shave. A lot of us, you know, when we shave, to very frank, that is the type of... Uh, uh, issues was to look at him and we admire and emulate such a person and seldom did I come across a person you look at a leader for certain qualities whereas in him I think you name it for that matter if you go back to our uh, pamphlets of uh, military leadership which are uh, elucidated by many speakers who are on the forum today I don't think there is any particular quality of leadership which you don't find in him he is typically one of those and yet, the grace with which with which he ended is this thing. He was offered a governorship of uh, JNK. He politely said, sorry, thank you. And he said, the generals just fade away. I've done my bit. And he never ever interfered in anything, whether it's commenting. He always said that I've done my part. There are many who are following me who will do their part. And I think uh, uh, the, the grace with which he commanded the a great Indian Army and uh, the the number of examples which he has left for so many of us 
to uh, emulate itself speaks volumes and i'm very very sure it's just a matter of time before this biography i still remember in 1983 you we were reading uh, romel for the staff college examination so i'm I, i'm sure we have here we have a person far ahead of many of the generations yes they were fortunate possibly to some extent that you could see the world war whereas if parakram had gone into actual practice what actually the, the, the war had taken place we would have seen the jan show that man even there thank you i think we are indeed uh, lucky to have uh, had an association with such a great man may his soul rest in peace om shanti thank you shankar thank you sir and uh, general bandari sir all yours i would like you to cap up what all we have spoken today evening so uh, general shankar it's going to be pretty difficult because with all the illustrious speakers who had very close association with him having mentioned everything else all that i would like to mention is that uh, it was in october 20 2001 during the army commanders conference uh, he was the chief and i was the dg and that that was the time when we tried our best to get the regiment the tag of general carter not individual officers opting for the regiment but like the infantry and the armored corps the gunners also to be recognized at the regiment unfortunately because the numbers were against us and i must say that some of our gunner army commanders also at that point in time because perhaps because of their compulsions uh did not come up to the expected standard of them we had got general joshi's report absolutely to the dot with the recommendations that the arm should be uh, sort of recognized as the general carter arm anyway you all know you all have been <coughs> you know, benefited after that uh, conference a lot of things came <laughs> now in the end uh, all that i would like to say then paddy was my personal friend mrs padman aban was a personal friend of my wife they were both young brides as i mentioned to you when we were in devlali in 1968 all throughout his life he's been a role model a role model for all of us not only the gunners but all the officers and men because of his integrity because of his professionalism because of his outspokenness and because of his being always fair and impartial so gentlemen first of all my grateful thanks to general shankar for having hosted this and my grateful thanks to all my friends on the panel who have given their valuable uh, insight to it to a great man and we all collectively wish him a great innings in heaven i am sure with his sense of humor and with his grace and this thing he'll do uh what should i say in in heaven also the heaven will be luckier to have him <laughs> thank you friends it's been great it's creating with you thank you thanks a lot sir i'm sure the heavens would be having their two tops or tots of rum and listening to his humor by now and that's what i hope he would be doing but having said that sir i think we have had a great discussion everything i would like to thank all of you who have watched this video today you put out your views which i put it out to everyone i would request all of you to propagate it to people because today i think we have lost one of the greatest military leaders we've had indian india has had it's not just the artillery which india has had i'm sure more will come in future 
but this man will be a role model for many of us for years to come those of us who read him and who will continue to read him will be great and one reader one one of the viewers has compared him with general manetra for wit right i think that is very appropriate i would say that he 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 had the wit of general manetra and the intellect of general sundar ji a great combination really? it's just unfortunate that we didn't go through with the uh, uh, parakram to its logical conclusion if that had been done a uh, lot of things would have come into focus but that's a different story and a different age uh, and i would also request all those who are watching and who those gunners please uh, circulate it to everyone and please remember uh, that again at the cost of repetition we've lost a great human being a great general and a great son of india may his soul rest in peace and i'd like to thank all of you for having taken your time out and spent this valuable time to uh, you know speak your thoughts out thank you sirs good evening and jai hind to all of you thank you all thank you sir thank you sir yeah. uh, thank you just one more request uh, if you can be kind enough to convey to mrs padmanabhan our heartfelt condolences on behalf of all of us not only the people who are here but the whole gana community the whole army as such and uh, may i also request you that you, if you can send this special copy of this to her to sort of uh, see it see it during her own time and see that uh, the respect we have for this great human being thank you thank you sir and jai hind